We're going to go ahead and continue this Mustang project today. If you have not seen any of the previous episodes, of course, I will go ahead and link them up above. However, if you are watching this and continuing the episodes, I am going to finish installing as much as I can today. My hope today is to get the front clip, all the cooling system on. And that's probably where I'm going to leave off. We'll see how far I get. There's a lot to do yet. I still have to finish the AC up. Um, this thing is a lot of work, but let's go ahead and get started with it. All right, so I put the turbo assembly here back on and I attached the little extension pipe that goes on it as well after the fact and I put the clamp on it. The clamp's kind of loose. I was trying to figure out the exhaust. I haven't quite figured that out yet. The V-band clamps that go on there, nothing quite lines up right. So I'm a little confused there. I'll figure it out though, just a matter of time. But this thing, which is a weird dongle here, it sits this part down along the firewall and it sits like right here, right, normally. And it was bothering me because it's totally in the way for it right here. I mean, it hits this, it's gonna go to the factory air box, which is no longer gonna exist. So I don't believe it's a relevant or needed part, but because I'm curious, I have to take things apart, and I have to verify to myself that I don't need the part. Now, it goes into the firewall here, and it has this little foam doohickey going on in here. Some kind of filter, I guess. It's bolted on by this little bolt, and it literally just goes through the firewall, and then it like hits the, the fabric-y material, the insulation material that's behind the firewall. That's it. That alone made me go... What the heck would that be for, right? What in the world? So I thought, what's it do? Can I blow through it? I tried blowing through it. I tried blowing through it this way. Nothing. No airflow, no matter what way. I try and blow through it or suck through it even. And it did just no airflow either way. So I thought, okay, let's pull it apart. See what it is. My curiosity once again. So I pop this guy off and I have here. There's a rubber diaphragm. Nothing else. Pop this guy out. It's literally that. I mean, there, there's like nothing to it. There's this weird rubber diaphragm that has, it's got these little lineup things. I line up on some holes and it seals against the inside of this guy. I, I don't understand. Uh, anybody? Do you guys know what this thing would be for? What is, what was Ford's intention with this weird contraption? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. I'm very, very curious. I will go ahead and throw this sticker part number up on the screen and you can go ahead and look it up on your own time if you like. So I have also taken, put the oil cooler lines for the transmission in place. I have that AC line kind of in place, but I want to wait till I figure out the exhaust to finish that. But that got annoying to me. So I'm just moving on to something else for now. Maybe I wasn't seeing something correctly, whatever. For now, what I'm going to start doing is this front area. So I do have to do the oil cooler lines for the turbos here. So I'm gonna kinda start looking into that. Oh, this turbo's missing one of the bolts. I don't have anything tightened down because I don't know where it's gonna need to be indexed yet. I know it's gotta be roughly, you know, I mean, there's no nowhere it can really go. It probably goes right in the middle on that one. This guy here, I'd imagine it's gonna come closer to this. That'd be my guess. Uh, I'm not positive yet, but I have to index the center carrier for the oil and the drain, and the drain for the oil I'm not even sure how that's going to hook up yet. I probably should have thought about that before I even put the engine in. That may bite me in the rear later, but I guess I will see. So I'll look into that as well. And then over here, I'm back on a little bit of a wiring task again. So this connector here is obviously not going to even come close to this connector here. These two need to connect. So I imagine I have to extend this out. So I peeled the sheathing off of this wire harness area and what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip these guys and then extend the wires so that I can actually plug it into here because I'm pretty positive yeah that connects definitely connects so I'm positive that this guy connects to that because these are the only connectors left there this is going to be for the fan and then of course this is like lights and whatnot so I'll get all the lights and stuff taken care of as well but that won't be until the bumper's on so I'm going to get all this stuff taken care of I'm also going to start working on getting the cooling system installed after all of that. So here I am putzing with the turbos and trying to figure out the oiling part of it. The lines that feed the turbos are kind of short. 
they include a Y, so I assume they're trying to get me to Y it to one union and then run it from there to the turbos. Even so, they're a little bit short and they're going to string across the belt system, so I might actually replace those lines with something a little bit better, uh, come up with a, maybe a little bit better solution for that. But in the meantime, I decided I'm going to try and do the drain pipes, see what those are looking like so I can get an idea of where those are going to run as well. And I put this one originally on that side. Now, since I tightened it down, I don't want to remove and install the gasket again. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and transfer the cartridge to the other side. But this one over here, I could not move it to the correct position. And because of that, the turbo does not sit. So what you want is do you want the drain on the bottom and this on the top because gravity, you want to make sure that the oil can drain out as best as possible. When I had it over there, it was canted a little bit no matter what I did because it would get too close to this guy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it over on this side and then we will see what it looks like when it's on this side. It should work a little bit better over here. Oh, even that does not work very well. So that fitting just might not be a good fitting for this system here, unless I have to flip it around. So I'm gonna do that once. I'm gonna flip this thing around and then we will see how it fits on either side that way. Well, that's unfortunate. So, if I have it on this side here, it straight up and down with the oil, it's going to hit the wastegate pipe there. If I put it over on this side, straight up and down, it's going to hit this part of the fender well area. So no matter what side I put it on when it's flipped that way, it doesn't work either. So this fitting is just not set up very well for this car. I don't know why they included that. I'm going to have to try and find a different fitting. More like the one that's on the other cartridge here, where it's just a straight fitting like this. So I'm going to try and find another one of these. I think I have one in one of my assemblies of parts sitting around here somewhere. I'm going to see what I can find. Hopefully I have it and I can make something work here. But I cannot use that other one. So I have pretty much the oiling system accomplished for the turbos. I still got to do the vacuum lines here for the waste gates. That won't be a very big deal. Now... The ON3 kit comes with this little line here, this T, and then these flexible dash four lines. What they originally expect you to do is, and it also comes with a nipple for the oil filter adapter, they expect you to go from the oil filter adapter to this T with this line, okay? So thread that guy on there, and then of course, hook up to the oil filter adapter somehow, right? And then they expect this guy to have this line come here, this line come here. Now, if I were to do that, it wouldn't be long enough. You'd literally have to like bring this thing up here or something to make the lines long enough. Then your lines would be stringing all up in the engine bay here. I don't like that. So I decided to opt out of using this thing. Instead, what I've done is I used two of the fittings. I grabbed another one of my fittings that I had. And I put that in that oil filter adapter. The oil filter adapter comes with three different holes in it. So I used two fittings on there and ran this line to a line that I made out of a soft aluminum. It's a, it's a hard line, I guess, but it's a soft aluminum line. And uh, uh, hooked it up right here and then put a nice little fitting here to hold on to it. I don't know how well you can see that from your view. Uh, but I put that fitting there and then I ran this to, to extend it to the oil cooler housing and then I ran this one directly to the housing because it had plenty of length for that. So by doing that I kept the lines out of the way and clear of any belts or anything like that. That way there's no, if you reach your hand down there you're not hitting a bunch of crap, right? And then the oil drains, they originally wanted you to use this push lock type AN fitting hose and then of course the other goofy thing that I already talked about and I have chosen to go with these hard lines. Now this one is completed. I did end up ding in this spot because I kinked it. I had to unkink it. I didn't want to make a new line just for that. It's way down here. Nobody's going to see it anyway. Uh, but I ended up going with hard lines here and I ran the fittings right into the oil pan down here. Now if you want to know more about how I did the fittings in the oil pan, I do talk about it in this video up in the corner. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. But this guy here, I do not have the fitting for this yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. I might have to run a small extension because the band clamp is in the way. Now the extension that they provided, this guy here as I talked about, it does not quite 
sit right no matter what I do with the thing. Although now, I, now that I'm looking at it, it almost looks like it would fit on this way. I'm gonna double check that quick. Oh no, no, it ends up hitting the the wastegate outlet there. So either they put this thing on in the wrong angle. It's almost like they should have twisted this this way and they just attached it wrong or something. I'm not sure. But I ordered a different fitting that just has a pipe thread on here. So I'll thread a fitting onto it and run it down. Uh, I think I can use a short piece of extension pipe on there or maybe straight to the fitting. Regardless, whichever way I do it, I should be able to get it to work. So for now, this line is loose and that's going to be one of the drain lines. Of course, the other one's already in. That one's tightened down because that one's good to go. I also have this housing in and tightened down because I'm conf confident this is going to stay where it's at. Now, a couple other things worth of noting are these clamps that hold the turbos onto the manifolds. When you index these guys, this one I have it so that it's way over here and that allows it to be plenty clear of anything. So that's pretty nice. And then this line, I'm gonna actually put an eyelet right here to hold that on. Uh, this computer here, they only have a single bracket bolt holding it down on the bottom. So I added, I made my own little bracket right here so that instead it would actually be mounted on the top too and it feels much better. So that's a little bit better. I still have to index this clamp up here. That's not a big deal, I'll turn it over. Not a, not a big issue with that. But this clamp right here, I actually had to flip it around. I had it going the other way before, and no matter what I did, I couldn't really tighten it well. So make sure you put this thing this way so you can get at it. So basically, these both these clamps sit the same direction either side of the car. You just want it to come to the passenger side. So the actual bolt sticks out towards the front and on the passenger side. So that's going to be the easiest way to access that and clear everything that might be in the way. And then this guy here, I just have it going straight up and down so I can easily access it there. It was turned this way, so you'd have to go at that direction. I didn't really like that, so I ended up doing it this way. That's much better. And of course, you can see now I also have radiator hoses in here. Now, I'm a little concerned about this spot. It looks like once the radiator's in, this is going to be against that. So I might have to cut this hose shorter just so I can pull it away. And what I might do is cut it shorter so I can pull it towards this and then clamp this guy to it to keep that off of there because obviously I don't want that on there. So that's one thing I need to consider as well. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate my zip ties here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, but I definitely gotta find some way to make sure I keep that off of there. If you're working on this like I am where you have these blades exposed, be sure to be extremely cautious not to bump these guys. They are very easy to bend. If you were to nick one of these, it's game over. So. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the other housing on here, but I do need to take it off so I can access this fitting a little easier. I'm just gonna throw the housing on here, throw a couple bolts in just enough to hold it in place and leave it there so it's safe so I don't accidentally drop something onto this thing because the last thing I need to do is damage an impeller. So I'll go ahead and do that quick and then I'll continue with some assembly. I gotta get some steering components on because I need to pull the car out for a little bit and do some cleaning. And in order to do that, I'm obviously gonna need the steering available to be able to use. Now battery terminals. The ON3 system had a little eyelet and then they gave you a marine style battery terminal. Those are okay. I'm totally cool with those. Those aren't really a problem, but I do prefer a different style of terminal. You can see this one here. I actually have this guy soldered into place and this is a very nice terminal design. This is actually a crimp terminal, but I solder them. So I don't just crimp them. I actually solder them. and. There's a special tool for it. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description below for the tool and the terminals. But basically what you do is you throw your wires in there. You grab this guy, put it on there like that, right? And then you'll whack it with a hammer nice and hard. And it will crimp this guy down. And you're supposed to, you know, do it on the floor or on a bench or something. So because I don't have a place to put it up here, I already had the cable all ran. What I did is I grabbed this giant iron block as a back weight threw it on here and then hit it with a hammer. That way I don't hit it against the car really hard and cause any kind of issue. So once I crimped it and it was locking the wires into place, then I went ahead and threw some solder in the hole, heated up, soldered it in really good. Uh, you make sure to solder it quickly though because the heat will transfer through a large copper cable and it'll end up getting stiff up the cable because the solder will actually travel up this cable if you don't do it quickly. So the faster you can do it, the better. I did this one pretty fast because it's still soft up until about here. So it only traveled that far up the cable. It's a little stiff right there, but it can still move just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with the battery box stuff as well here. 
and get that all back into place. That's pretty much self-explanatory. The only real reason it's out is because of this AC line and being able to access the, the nut system that's down there. So I'm going to move that, tighten that, get the battery box back in, get the steering on, and uh, then I get to work on the exhaust. Now, if you recall, I said I was struggling with the exhaust. Well, I found a pipe similar to this for the exhaust. It did not work on the passenger side at all. It was not even close. And the driver's side, I couldn't really try because I didn't have that second little mid pipe in there. Uh, I do have the mid pipe in there now, but I found this guy in the car. So I stored it in the car. I didn't even realize it. I had the rest of the exhaust sitting over under my bench. But now that I found this, I believe I can get the exhaust finished and figured out. So that's also why I'm going to finish the battery tray thing. I'm just going to make sure this fits where the exhaust sits now. If it does, I will go ahead and bolt everything down and then I will be ready to finish up that battery tray and get everything moving. Now for the battery tray, I did end up doing something different than I expected. I boogered up some RTV, built up like a wall of RTV in here. And I'll just do this on the other side too. It's not like anybody sees it anyway. I just need to make sure it stops airflow from flowing through us. So you can see I've obviously accomplished a few things as far as assembly goes. I have the air cooler sitting here. I do not have this charge pipe in there yet. And the only reason I don't have this in there is because I still have to do that oil line. I haven't got the parts to do that yet. So I'm still waiting on that. But this guy is the one that goes there. So if you're doing one of these kits on your own, I'm just going to quickly review a couple of the things where they need to go and how they need to go just so you have an idea when you go to do it yourself. Uh, we have the wiring here. I extended this harness. So I did solder on the ends. I basically put the butted the ends together, twisted them, soldered them, heat shrinked them. And then I got one piece of heat shrink in the middle here. I'm still going to wrap this with tape before I put it where I'm going to, but I'm going to run it underneath the main frame here up to the connector, which is going to sit underneath the turbo. So I'm just going to go ahead and tuck it down in there after I run it up through there. And then this guy here is actually for the AC sensor here. And I did the same thing, you know, stripped, butted, soldered, you know, twisted, soldered, and then heat shrink. So those guys are all ready to go. And those were the two that I had to extend. This one I wasn't knowing I was going to have to extend. I may have to do something else yet. I doubt it though. I think those are the only two that I'm going to have to do. So if I put this guy here, you can see it's in the way of this thing. And this guy would like to run a filter. So I'm going to have to come up with some kind of crazy solution here where I create an inland pipe of some sort out of four inch aluminum elbow. I may have to cut a chunk of it out and weld like a, a humped area into it just so that it can actually function properly. Now this might be a four inch pipe here, but the actual compressor wheel inside diameter is much smaller. This is only a 55 millimeter turbo. So it's much smaller on the inside there. And uh, because of that, I can get away with putting a hump here without affecting airflow too badly. As long as I keep the hump to a minimum, it should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy taped up and then do that. Now, there's a couple brackets I was confused about early on when I was trying to figure the system out before I actually started assembling them, but I did figure out where they go and they do have to be modified to use them. I wish On3 would have done this from the get-go when they built the kit. And then as far as the charge pipe stuff goes, I don't have any clamps on yet. I was just trying to fit things, but this weird squiggly aluminum fabricated small pipe goes to this turbo here and then comes up and then you have a 90 degree silicone hose elbow here. And then the shorter, smaller one, the reducer coupler, and then you have the large pipe going into the throttle. So the blow off valve is gonna sit here, obviously. And then there is this little guy, which I think is probably for, if you recall, I re remember I mentioned this thing is far too close to this wastegate here, and I was gonna have to pull it away to make it work. Well, right now it's kind of in a bad spot as well. So I have this hose on here. This is the factory hose. I did shorten the hose a considerable amount. I cut this much off of it to get it to clear. Now, perhaps this guy is some sort of a replacement for this. Maybe it sits like that. I don't know. Still doesn't seem very useful. The bottom side, I don't see it being useful for the bottom hose either. I don't know. I'll figure it out. If I don't use it, I don't use it. I just need to be able to cool the thing and keep things from melting. That's the big goal here. So I think this guy, I can actually 
mount up here and I'll be okay. And that keeps everything far enough away from here because I can easily fit my hand down behind here. So I'll find out when I actually put these brackets on. Perhaps this thing will sit this way more and that would be helpful if it does. Otherwise I could cut this a little shorter yet. I do have a little bit of room to work with. But I'm going to go ahead and finish up, button up a few more things. And then hopefully we'll be able to put the exhaust on and fire this thing up. So I'm just kind of trying to dry fit some things. I just quickly, like, I don't have anything actually bolted in. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can make these filters work. I'm trying to look for a path in which I can maybe run it into the fender well. There's nothing on this side. It's just there's not enough room for it. On the other side here, I could probably weasel it if I do it right down into the corner. But it would be very tough to do. So right now I'm at a point where it's like, I don't know if he can actually run a filter on this thing. I don't see enough room in the engine bay to actually do so. So I am struggling big time right now with several things as far as fitment goes. Uh, I have this deal here. The air filters are, there's no way in hell they're gonna fit. I mean, they are so, so far off from fitting. It's crazy. So I do have a plan and I am gonna run some stuff through there. I found some rubber four inch to three inch couplers that I can put on here and then it's like at a 45 degree angle and that'll work out really well with some 45 degree three inch pipe. And then I have a coupler that goes from the three inch, that's aluminum, that goes from the three inch here to a four inch. That way I can attach the four inch air filter on there and he can still have his four inch air filter. So that problem is solved. But you can also see I have the wheel turned. Why do I have the wheel turned? Well, fitment issues, once again. So, this on three bracket here, this is what's supposed to be for the fuse box. And I originally complained that it didn't fit the fuse box very well. Uh, I believe this is probably for the 2017 and previous models. It probably fits that fuse box better. And the fuse box on this car, no bueno. So, no good. Uh, setting it where they had it, where I had it before, go ahead and show it, that does not work. So what I've done instead is the bumper guard or the bumper support piece, this guy right here, it had a couple of brackets that came from this thing down to here, but now there's the intercooler and intercooler brackets all in the way. So I can't use these brackets anymore. They used to sit, you know, like in there like that, but it gets in the way of this guy here. So I can't use these things. So what I did instead is I used this to actually mount the electrical box. So the round tube here, I had to cut it of course, but the round tube here, I was able to squish it down and make it so it could fit inside the channel of this plastic deal. I drilled a hole in it through a screw through there. So you can see the screw going through there. And having that screw going through there, it makes it actually pretty solid. It's way better mounted than the other bracket was with just the stupid zip ties, which I did not like at all. Um, now it's at a goofy angle and it's crooked. So beforehand, it sat way too far over this way and there was no way you could actually turn the tire. Once I put the wheel and tire on, it was like, yeah, that's not gonna work. There's no way possible. So I have rearranged it in a spot that now the wheel is almost cranked and it's almost touching the box, but it's actually cranked as far as it can go before it hits the wiring that's back there. So apparently Ford had this thing set up in a way that was able to turn the wheel as much as possible. So I have to figure out what I need to do to stop this thing at a certain point so he can only turn it so far. Either that or he's going to have to invest in some wheels and tires before he can even drive this thing because even one time of that tire hitting that wiring harness, it's game over. Cause that is the main harness and that's gonna be an issue. And it's not like I have the harness sticking out at all. I mean, it's as close to the, the fender well as it can get. I'm willing to bet you these tires come within a very close distance of the actual fender well. I know that the plastic on these things was almost cut out in that area and it mounted flush against the, the fender well there. So. I'm gonna try and make sure that I can get the plastic in here too. I might have to cut some of it out for the plastic fender liner. Um, it's gonna be interesting to say the least for me. I mean, 
you guys probably won't find it very interesting. I'll just show you the final result. Now, the air filter thing, I'm gonna go back to that real quick because there is enough room also on this side to run it through here. It's gonna be a really tight fit, but I think I can do it. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Um, another little bit of concern I have is right over in this area, this stuff is sticking out a ways compared to what I think it should be. And I have a feeling the tire is gonna be an issue there too. I have not verified it yet or checked it, but this sensor definitely has me a bit concerned. This is like an amp sensor for one of the battery cable, the negative cables there. And I do wanna try and find something better to do with that. Maybe flip it around to the other side. This cord is not long enough though for me to just flip it around. So I might end up having to extend this thing in order just to face it the other way and go into that little pocket there where the wiring used to go. So something I just thought of that came to me as a possibility to cause or stop the wheel from contacting any wiring harness or anything here is to create a shield across here. So you can see I have this piece of aluminum that I just, I added that there, there was already a hole up here. I added that there just to kind of hold the harness into place, make sure it doesn't pop up because this side had nothing to hold it down. So if he were to hit a bump or something, it could have popped over the brake line that's over there. And if it did that, obviously it'd fall out. And then when he turned the wheel, it hit the harness. So I can't have that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll create a plate that attaches up here somehow and goes across here and covers the harness where the tire would rub. And then I'll do it on all four sides, all four areas where the tire will rub. And that should be able to prevent the wheel from sliding because he'll hear it or feel it. And then he can just counter turn it a little bit. Um, that's assuming that I don't find another way to stop the actual suspension from turning past that point. I might find something out that way that I can do instead, but this thing has quite the interesting suspension control system going on here. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it that way. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to have to do is block this thing off on this side here. So I'll have to see what I can figure out and let you guys know. So as you can see, the car got a bit complex as far as the whole cooling system assembly goes. It beat me up pretty bad. The wiring, the cooling system, the intake tubes, things like that. It's way more complicated than it really needs to be. But that's kind of what happens when you have that much engine stuffage going on in that engine bay. That is a very large, I can't say displacement because it's a small displacement. It's only five liters. It's a very large engine mechanically as far as its actual size goes, its physical size in that engine bay. And it's a tight squeeze, even with a huge engine bay like that Mustang actually has. So it became difficult. But on the next episode, we are probably going to have the car running. So stay tuned for that. And we will get that thing hopefully finished up and fired up. And then, of course, I have the last little bit of what I started out this video with, talking about that stupid little tube. So here are my thoughts on that intake tube thing. Is this some sort of muffle echoing device? It's a Ford Mustang, right? A, a performance car. So you want to hear a throaty sound when you're accelerating. So the only thing I could possibly think of, this thing flexes, this guy goes to the air box, is the air box, when you're under load, it's going to have the pulsing of the engine going through it. That pulsing is going to do this without allowing air to transfer and act just like a speaker. That speaker is going to echo the sound through here. This little filter mechanism will create a, a smoother tone rather than any kind of hissing that might happen from this weird dongle. And then it enters the cabin area through the firewall, perhaps makes some more sound. That's a weird theory. I don't know. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm way off. I have no idea. That's the only logical solution I could come up with. And to me, it seems very, very silly. Ford, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Just don't put the muffler on the damn intake. <laughs> it's really not that difficult. It'll make noise. Whatever. Whatever. But that's, of course, assuming that's what this thing is for. With that, like, share, subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.